through line? What was the main thread that you began exploring with this film? Well, it's a Roman epic. What can I say? It's a, it's a, it's a dive into a world uh, that that uh, maybe exists more than it than it should. But of course, it's uh, it's about loyalty. Uh, but ultimately, for me, it's 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 uh, in the end, I hope a vision of hope, and, and that uh, that as, as as Caesar said, we are. We are, you know, we're worthy of being admired. We're, 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 they're always, you know, the vision of, of human beings that are great and are capable of dealing with any challenge they have to make a beautiful world for ourselves and for our children. You know, that's my hope. It's a hopeful thing. Adam, playing this character, this character who is one of those great men who has a grand vision. Um, what comes with that is always, I think, an understanding of what power means and how to wield power. As you were exploring how you would portray the character, how did you think about the power that he wants and the power that he wields? Um, I don't know that I thought much about, uh, I, I guess he's, a lot of the qualities that he has are qualities that you can find in Francis also is not, not, not entirely, but, uh, but you know, he, there was a lot of references that we talked about Walter Gropius and the Bauhaus movement and Robert Moses to an extent, but the, the good things about him, you know, Francis does embody of uh, giving uh, authorship to his actors and, and, uh, and valuing youth you know, and but just because necessarily something is due, new doesn't necessarily make it right. You know, the, the, a lot of the actors that were the interns were young, aspiring filmmakers. That's something that uh, you know he, he is very principled in not having a right answer, which was also similar for for Caesar. And even hearing Francis talk now about, the, you know, he made a, a movie about. Uh, utopia as a conversation, and not not that it's a, easily could have made one of a, a dystopia, but he still has faith in human genius. So those those are things that I kind of took away from my conversations with Francis. It's less about power and, and more about um, remaining optimistic, remaining optimistic about uh, you know faith in humanity. And uh, Natalie and Giancarlo, your roles in, in the film um, they have a, a, added different layers, different colors uh, to the story, uh, not always driven by optimism. Uh, in your character especially, I think there's a, a sense of hard-won realism or even cynicism. I wonder if you could talk about your characters and how you approach them from this point of view of hope and optimism. Well, I, I'm, I'm so very inspired, not only to be here tonight at TIFF, but um, also by my relationship with Francis, uh, who was always inspiring in terms of how he guided all of us as actors, uh, but planted the seeds in our own um, brains and spirits and hearts to uh, guide us to the truth of our character. Um, for me, uh, I found that playing this character was a transformation for me and gave me hope again to believe that human beings are intrinsically good and can change. We, we are, um, you know, we are made up of so many different parts, uh, not only in our intellect, but in our soul and our hearts. And, um, you know, the, the, the beautiful guidance of the film for me is, you know, the, the, the two things are Adam's beautiful line, the hardest to look into are the sun and, and your own soul. Um, and, and that should guide us all. And, but many times it doesn't uh, because we're, we're so many outward and, uh, uh, in the world. We have so many circumstances that affect us, including our own desires and what we want. But um, for me, uh, I feel as if my portrayal has to have a certain vulnerability so that I start to think not about the I and the me, but more about the we and the us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Julia is someone who, um, in this movie, she kind of represents someone who is looking for answers. She's been nurtured and loved and poured into by her father, who she highly admires, and he kind of represents a much more traditional way of doing things. 
and then she meets this man, Caesar, who has opened up her world and ask, forces <coughs> us all to ask questions and suddenly the things that she knows, the things that her father had taught her suddenly come into question. And so she really is kind of the, being pulled between these two very different schools of thought and she has to really work out what she want, um, like what she thinks, and um, in a way becomes a bridge between these two very different um, uh, men, and and loves them deeply anyway. You know, she really um, kind of builds that bridge, and she says, "I want to be a go-between," um, because she's really in, excited by what Caesar's doing, but also very much respect, respects and what her father is and who he is and yeah she has this conflict of loyalty and she it's very difficult but really um i think what adam just said you know what do we take from the past or like what thing just because things are new doesn't mean they're right but there are things from the past that we can carry forward and then into the future and i think julia kind of plays in that space you know the interesting thing about this project is Everything in it really happened and is true, either in modern New York or in ancient and Republican Rome. I mean, everything I took was was I took I took I literally lifted it. And you know, Clodio and his sisters. There, there. Those of you who, who have studied some uh, about these things know who that is. That's the famous bad girl Clodia. Uh, and, and, you know, in the Roman family, a woman, if you were a Julian and you had five daughters, they were all called Julia. Julia. And, of course, they had nicknames. It was Julie and Julia. And, and, and the Claudia sisters, that's, that Shea and his sisters were famously bad uh, behaving kids. And, and allegedly they were sleeping with each other. And Claudia, the, 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 the main... Uh, we have her history because the poet Catullus thought she was in love with her and wrote all this love poetry to her. So those who study Catullus study about uh, uh, Claudia. And, and, and then there were incidents from Mayor Dinkins in uh, New York. So I took everything, everything in it. If you say, that, what about that nutty thing or that weird thing? I can tell you where I got that from, but I didn't make it up. Uh, uh, right, you know, and you know, I I sent this script to Mary Beard, who was I think she's still living. Mary Beard, she's an English uh, historian, and uh, I and she was an expert on Sallust, where the the Catiline conspiracy appeared of, of one of the many uh, historians, and she said, you know, let me tell you, I, I, said, I like the script, but take more liberties. She said because uh, Suetonius, who's another historian. The way he writes it is totally different. And, and it was Caesar was very much, young Caesar was very much involved um, in the Catiline conspiracy. So she said, I, you know, read some Bernard Shaw because he did the best job of, of writing uh, Roman uh, history because he, he totally took, you know, Shaw wrote the famous uh, Caesar and Cleopatra. And he said he took a lot of liberties. <laughs> So, so the advice was take more liberty. So that's when I checked. Uh, Ca uh, Catalina, the famous Catalina, from those of you who, who, who read uh, Sallust, was um, um, uh, Sergius uh, Catalina, and and, she, and I called him Caesar mainly. So when I when I offered an actor, he goes, "Well, you're going to play Sergius Catalina." I said, "Who's that?" You know. But if I say you're going to play Caesar. It's, oh, well, I, that's interesting. <laughs> so, so I took Mary Beard's advice and was more like Shaw in that I, I took liberties with it. But everything in it, and, and the most outlandish stuff, the stuff like some of the stuff she, uh, Shia did uh, uh, and what have you. And of course, the bad ladies of Rome, the mother, the mother of, uh, of Nero and the mother of... Uh, of uh, what's his name, Caligula, uh, Agrippina, and stuff. These these made these made the character Aubrey played while Platinum look like an angel compared to their behavior. <laughs> that stuff. <laughs> so so for me, you know, it's funny. I look at this. People say, "Where did you get this?" And I say, "I got it. I got it from 
uh, from history and from even the even the story those of you may know it of the Van Bulo case where he allegedly poisoned his wife and she lay in a coma for 30 years. She had only just died about, uh, I'm sure some of you know that case, she had only died uh, uh, two or three years ago. She was in a coma all this time. And, and uh, I, sort of, I sort of basically mined everything from New York that made New York feel like Rome to me and then I mined everything in Rome and combined it all and that's how this, this came about. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.